Admittedly, last time I made this video, the Quest 2 worked with Linux, but it wasn't a great experience. Now, if you look to the right of me, 4K, 120Hz VR, wirelessly, all coming from that importantly Linux computer. Audio works fine, no lowering the bitrate anymore, even the setup's easy. Get the native not flat pack version of Steam, install Steam VR, run it once, then download the ALVR app image and run it. For most of you, that is genuinely it. Because I'm on Fedora, I had to do one more step, which was install the Mesa Freeworld package to allow hardware video encoding, but after that, it was actually it for the computer. Then just put ALVR on the Quest, open it, allow microphone permissions, press trust on the computer, and go. At least on the surface. Okay, there is more that you need to do to get it perfectly good, but I will go over that. But first, I think it's important to explain why this is so important. The other two major PC VR to Quest streaming solutions, Oculus, Airlink, and Virtual Desktop, are Windows only, with no plans to change. And that's fair enough. The Linux market is, first of all, hard to cater to because there are a lot. There's a lot more variation. Windows is Windows for the most part. Obviously, there are AMD drivers and Nvidia drivers, but at least there's only one of each. There's not Nuvo and Real Nvidia and Open source NVIDIA, and then with AMD you've got the AMD Pro drivers and the normal ones and the different Vulkan drivers. It all gets much more complicated on Linux. Combined with the fact that there are very few people, it makes it very hard to deal with. So for a business, remember, Geek Odin is trying to make a profit here. Yeah, not parting virtual desktop to Linux or Airlink to Linux makes sense. But just because the relative amount of us Linux users who want VR is low compared to Windows, doesn't mean the absolute number in a vacuum isn't still huge. If only there was a project where making money wasn't the point, and the sole motivation was making what the community wants. My history with ALVR goes as follows. At first, it's not very good, but at least it's wireless, so I use a combination of it and wired Oculus Link, since Air Link wasn't a thing yet. But a Windows reinstall, and probably primarily the AMD driver reinstall that came with that, fixed my performance issues, and now it looks amazing, and I stick with that for ages because it's better than Link. During that time, Air Link even came out, and I tried it, but it was horrendous. Everything from the image quality to the latency, it was just bad, and that meant I had to have the Oculus software installed still, which is not something I'm a fan of. But after that year, ALVR's controller tracking got ruined by an update, and that made me curious enough to try Airlink again. And it was perfect! Everything other than having to have the Oculus software installed was perfect, the image quality was exceptional, the latency was great, the controller prediction was tight right to where my hands were, it was really impressive. And that, combined with the fact that AMD released a driver update that actually locked ALVR's bitrate to a really low amount that made it look bad, meant that since then, I've actually been staying with Airlink. And I just want to say something about AMD drivers since then. First of all, that issue just got fixed. Like, not in this instant, but as close as you could possibly get to it. But also, AMD, this reminds me of the old AMD. In, in 20, since 2020, the AMD driver experience has been way better than NVIDIA's horrendous mix of nice looking but frustrating GeForce experience and functional but super old looking NVIDIA control panel. AMD's software has been mostly bug free and actually modern feeling without getting in my way, which NVIDIA's failed to do. But this I, I, guess, I guess it's fixed now, but the fact that it took this long to fix and it's video encoding, AMD needs to get it together. But back to LVR, last year in June, I made a video very similar to this one about how LVR works now on Linux, but it wasn't quite good enough to switch to and Windows still wasn't fixed. In October, I tried to make a video about maybe it's good enough for Windows and Linux again, there hadn't been any improvements. Then I tried again in December and it was so close to working. 120 hertz was functional in simple scenes and audio worked now. But my GPU's encoder was still being overloaded thanks to the lack of foveated encoding. Which brings us to the 15th of February, 2023. This isn't being filmed on that day, but you get the point, it's the same process. Open ALVR, open Beat Saber, redirect audio, which I'll explain later, don't worry, and play Beat Saber. There we go. Looking around. <laughs> but the reason that's so easy now is because a few things have changed since last time. The first thing that contributes to the no longer stuttery 120Hz, which I realise you wouldn't be able to see, this is a 144Hz monitor, but you're watching on a 30fps video, and the lowest drops bef before were still above 60fps, so 
you would never notice on this 30 fps video but the first thing that contributes to that is enabling legacy motion smoothing in steam vr settings for whatever reason keeping that off so i guess the new motion smoothing setting ruins any game i've tried all of them go really stuttery it's just not enjoyable but turning that on means Beat Saber goes from unplayable to smooth. But secondly, and the much more exciting thing, because it's an actual change to ALVR rather than just me changing a setting, is foveated encoding now works on Linux, which is amazing. In case you weren't aware, foveated encoding is making the middle of your vision encoded at full resolution so it looks clear, but your vision is actually worse around the edges of your eyes and you just don't notice because well, if you look around with your eyes, where you're looking is the new center of your vision, so it doesn't really matter, but try reading things that are just slightly off to the side, it's not going to work. So, VR can take advantage of that by compressing the rest of the stream further, because you won't be able to notice it, unless you look to the edge of the stream with your eyes, but generally it's fine. That used to only be available on Windows, but it's needed more on Linux, since that's where my GPU's encoders are being less effectively utilized by the encoding software. Like, encoding is slower on Linux, but thanks to foveated encoding now being there, 120 hertz, not not quite 4K, I've been calling it 4K, but nearly 4K that the Quest does, 7 million pixels, is now functional. And that's made even more impressive by the fact that the game I'm playing, Beat Saber, doesn't even have a Linux part. We're running a game under a translation layer with a quest on Linux. It's... <laughs> there are so many layers where this could go wrong and it just keeps working. Also, how I mentioned audio support before. By default, for whatever reason, it chooses to stream my desktop's microphone from my webcam to the headset, so if I speak, I hear an echo of myself. But that's able to be fixed with an application called QPWGraph, which lets you rewire audio in Linux. So all I would do is there's this Pipewire Elsa VR server, my Lifecam Studio's going to it, so I would delete that, take Beat Saber, or realistically the output, but I'll just do Beat Saber now, drag it, and now Beat Saber will come out of the headset. Though you should know, for whatever reason, it's a lot tinnier than usual, but otherwise it works. It's amazing that ALVR has progressed this much at all, let alone on Linux. And so I look forward to many more hours of Linux VR gaming on the Quest 2. Oh, get subscribed.